Hello, on the education file, Professor Lighthouse here reporting for Media House LCC live from Cypress Mountain, Canada, site of so many exciting Olympic events here within the virtual reality confines of Teen Second Life. Over the past few years, advances in technology have contributed to the rapid evolution of highly enriched virtual worlds that simulate the real world experience. Now, with respect to education, the possibility of presenting knowledge in a variety of media formats that appeal to a wider array of learning styles has the potential to facilitate deeper levels of understanding, promote critical thinking, improve long-term memory recall, and given the simulated learning context, increase the likelihood that such knowledge will be used in an appropriate real-world context. Specifically, for students who struggle with concepts presented in a text-only format, the multiple intelligence friendly environment of virtual reality provides numerous access routes to the mind that engage learners and allow teachers to challenge students with more complex learning and evaluation situations. For example, a student learning ancient history can now walk along the Great Wall of China, stopping along the way to observe some of the Chinese sinographs or writing, all from the confines of their classroom. Cross-curricular enrichment is then achieved when the same history student applies concepts they are learning in geometry using Second Life's CAD tools to build their own Great Wall. Finally, our student may then return to their Chinese language course, where students from across the globe await intently in the presence of their Mandarin instructor, who is in fact based in Shanghai. Such collaborative educational experiences are no longer merely ideas, but in the case of Scolaborate.com, they are rapidly becoming the norm. Within this virtual campus, participating schools develop projects that are accessible to all of its residents, encourage global collaboration, and include a complement of online support tools and learning resources. This community, established by Wesley Field, the Director of Online Learning at MLC School in Sydney, Australia, was originally comprised of six schools only a few years ago, and has since expanded to include 40-plus schools and educational organizations, with as many as 150 teachers and 4,000 students. I recently had an opportunity to interview Mr. Field via broadband at Media House LCC Studios in Second Life. Joining me live from Australia is Mr. Wesley Field, founder of Scolaborate. Thank you for joining us, Mr. Field. Now, despite its novelty, Scolaborate's shared collaborative campus concept has really captured the imagination of schools, and participation has swelled. How many schools and students comprise the Scolaborate family today? Well, if there's 45 schools, then I would average three teachers per school. So a couple of hundred teachers. Numbers of students would be 200 in the big schools and uh, you go down to like six kids, you probably average 100, so say 4,000. Now, they don't, they don't come in all the time. They come in in dribs and drabs. Well, that's impressive. So how fast has the growth been? Well, it's accelerating. Uh, so in the first year, I think we had six schools. Uh, in the second year, we got up to about 30 schools. And in the last uh, month and a half, it's you know we've got half that again. Uh, so it's definitely a, a steady increase. Given those numbers, where would you like to see participation levels at? Uh, my gut feel will be a hundred schools, which will give you about thirty schools in each time zone. Uh, so that's a gut feel. So, what is the most effective way to promote collaboration given the multitude of time zones amongst participating schools? The difficulties are using traditional models where you try to um, integrate one project with an, um, one learning area at a time zone that suits one school and move it into a different time zone and do it there. So, you've got to come up with creative ways on how to work around that. And that's what the leadership program's about. You give kids a leadership role within the school and you get half a dozen kids who are ambassadors and what they're charged with is making the other school's activities work. So they have to research the activity, find out what the person really wants to achieve, attend, attend the activity and make sure that it works for them. So whether that's collaborate or build or whatever, uh, they participate. So you've got students from 
every continent across the globe, what are some of the solutions employed to get students from vastly different time zones to work together? When you run your activity, it can happen in your KLA or in your key learning area at the time that you want it to. And the kids who will turn up will be from all over the world because each one of us will only send one kid. But you'll end up with 15 kids who are from all over the world, which I think would be better anyway. And I think that's much more manageable. You've only then got to sort of manage those six kids rather than try to organize a whole class. So how can a school maximize its benefit from this Collaborate virtual environment? Well, the success we've had is where the meeting in the virtual world is a culminating or a motivating part of a greater unit. So that most of the work is done within the school. It is about setting up real learning in your school and workshopping that learning um, in order to develop a purpose to then collaborate for. The ones that fail are the ones who come in and assume that all kids will just be motivated by being in a virtual world. Now we know that the teenage years are often filled with a lot of social and interpersonal angst. So what are some of the interpersonal and social learning opportunities that can transpire in a virtual reality environment? The major long-term thinking one we've had has been the creation of a set of values for the virtual world. So then they had to imagine, well, what world do we want? And uh, they sort of articulated what the, the world would be. Um, so when they had the, the trouble with the Great Wall of China, where they were pretty well dishing on the Chinese, uh, well, the problem there was they weren't considering the Chinese. So if we had a value like inclusion, then we would have to include them and say, well, okay, well, so we can't pick on them. What's the important issue here? The important issue is freedom of speech. Um, so let's examine that. And if I'm examining it, I can examine it in my own country and then ask a question like, and how does it go in your country, rather than picking on others. So it's, it's that um, uh, promoting social cohesion. Oh, that's very interesting. So would you say there are instances where students who are normally isolated are able to use the anonymity of Second Life to learn interpersonal skills and gain personal insight? That has, that's been uh, consistent all over the world. In fact, somebody's just had an article published here in Australia, the same thing where they had a bunch of refugee kids come in and experience the same sort of stuff. I can speak on behalf of a couple of kids we've had here, again, a bit picked on uh, during their normal school life, very shy, inhibited, uh, came in, had a few skills, so other students wanted to talk to them, didn't know really who they were. Um, so they gained this enormous respect within in world, and with that respect came the confidence within world and once they had the confidence in world where they were practicing talking to other kids and they felt that they were worthy citizens, etc., they then took that confidence outside and started to speak up in the school. Now, obviously, a program of this size does incur a certain amount of costs, and not all schools are created equally. What are some of the enrollment fees uh, for schools to participate in a project like this? The, the major cost to us are land prices. And I've made the priority building a community rather than you know, making any money. Well, whenever anyone joins, I say um, schools like yours and mine should pay $1,500 because we're pretty wealthy, well-to-do schools. Um, third world countries should come in for nothing and we should support them. Uh, so, so what's your school? What's your organisation? Where do you think you fit? And I've been very, very up to them about that because I think the important thing is we establish community first before we worry too much about the money. I've been sort of hopeful that we'd get some decent funding. Mr. Field, thank you for joining us. This Collaborate certainly does seem to offer a lot of innovative and cutting-edge opportunities in education, and we look forward to hearing about newer developments in the near future. Thank you.